your donor school, I believe? Yeah, I haven't gone school? to law school, though. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, but <laughs> is that going to happen? I still want it to, but like, I don't know when it would happen. I don't know what the time line would be, but I want it to. I want to be called a lawyer, no? <laughs> so, you can't be called a Sorry. Okay, so... But then I just feel like, so for instance, you just become like the biggest thing next year. Do you think we're just going to have time for that? I can't make time. I mean, mm. if I do the work enough, I feel like there will be a time where I would have a space and I can just do it then. Okay. If you just think. a personal decision. Yeah. Well, I get it though. You want to be yeah. called a lawyer and... Bruh, it's been like how many years? Like seven years chasing law. I gotta, I gotta finish this. I I, finish I get it. that because I also have a brother who just finished medicine. Nine years for a six year course. So I understand it. You get. I do. Because <laughs> I asked him the same question. Are you going to practice? I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> Nine years, obviously. <laughs> so I get it. But then, um, of course, being in law school, mm. you already started pursuing music right and then now you're done how has as your background in law in any way you know shaped the way you sort of approach music or the industry or any anyhow in any way has influenced anything yeah i think studying law i'm going to look well studying law has informed my decisions at least to a certain degree Mm -hmm. you get me like when it comes to agreements i was always somebody who was very wary of agreements because okay. like I don't know I don't know the practical aspect of music music law, entertainment law so I'm very wary, I'm reading the contracts I know terminology at least to a certain degree so I'm very wary checking, I have a lawyer now but yeah. I can still read the contracts I like need you to, understand, yeah, yeah. to understand what means what so I think it has informed my decisions and even my actions, there are some certain things I won't do because I know I'm not legally obligated to do it you yeah. understand? or Vice versa. How do you decide the elements to sort of pull, you know, when you're creating a new, mm-hmm. for instance, you want to create a new track. So how do you know, okay, I'm going towards, you know, the R&B direction or the dancehall direction. How do you decide what elements to pull from when creating a, a brand new song? Uh, shout out to Tiki. Our questions are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I really like this question because to even when I was starting, my biggest issue was picking what genres I would that would be my foundation mm. because you need you need to have a foundation at the end of the day because I can do a lot of things even outside what you've heard if you hear me on other journeys you're gonna think like I've been doing this for years like that's my thing but like I needed something that I felt very you understand very close to like I can resonate with it and I found R and became very easy to me dance hall it gives this energy that my spirit just resonates with yeah. and afro pop and i was like this is going to be the foundation so when i'm in the studio and i'm trying to create i just have my foundation in mind i know how i'm going to approach it so it just depends on what we're going for the intentionality like is it a love song is it this yeah. is it that so yeah and then i also have ideas that i note down in my notes voice notes yeah. but what's your most comforting space though out of all the genres i have a fusion artist like there's no one you get i like to merge so it's always the three which one do you listen to oh, away from your recording if i show you my library yeah <laughs> you will be confused bro oh even you with your your confused. listening range is also that diverse yeah okay yeah like i listen to very well, i'll show you after don't worry okay it's no problem odd. we'll check we'll check it out yeah. okay we're still talking about the process when you're creating mm-hmm. so for instance creating you know lyrics right now mm-hmm. um i'm curious for you how do you start do you do like the melody first mm-hmm. and you know or do you have a concept in your head or do you go with the lyrics first how does it work when well, you're i think i've been in the studio before I used to sing actually when I was in your yeah, life. I, I, I was like, I, I was just questions are too, they're too exact. <laughs> okay, yeah, so for me, it's, it's melodies first. Melody. Melodies first. But words come to me sometimes. Like, at least a word, a sentence, and sometimes that would dictate what the song is about. Sometimes it just yeah. depends. Like, Mayana. Mayana was the first word that came to me when I heard the beat, and I was like, okay, yeah, let's build around that. And I'll just, you know check my notes i'd be like what theme are we going for today or what am i feeling like you know yeah i liked my Anna, by the way thank you yeah, by the okay. way okay still talking on you know your versatility yes. you know your fluid you blend different genres you're versatile and that would showcase creativity and a dynamic range and it's fantastic because you know you can do anything what do you study visa admin 
<laughs> talk to him. Like, so yeah. that's great. Like, oh my god, you know, she she's got the range. But also, on the flip side, you know, does that broad approach make it difficult for people to sort of label you into a category? And are you bothered about that? Not necessarily. I feel like people don't have an issue labeling people. Like before, <laughs> before now, they thought I was an R&B artist. It was something yeah. that they would call me. But I know within myself, I'm not an R&B artist. I'm fusion artist, and I'm blending more than R&B. And if you listen close enough, you would hear it. You mm-hmm. get me? But like that, people will always label. They, I don't think people have a problem with labeling. But I need people to know that I cannot be boxed. It's always good. I'm always going to evolve. There's always something I will add that is different every time you get me so i want and i'm establishing a sound Mm -hmm. that is bigger than just one genre if that makes any sense like you i want you to hear me on let's say a pop record a full-on yeah pure pop record and be like that's cold like you still know it's me it's yeah regardless of the genre yeah but did you have a name do you do what do you call yourself it's 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 afrofusion i mean that's the easiest thing to call it yeah. okay yeah. so you just talked about mayana and i'm sure it's off the brand new project as mm-hmm. well which is called caution yeah. with a k by the way and mm-hmm. that's a bold statement mm-hmm. what does that mean to you like in the context you know of the ep is it i don't know a reflection a warning what does it mean to you so caution is it's a warning because Prior to now, I was in a different head. I was in different headspace. Mm-hmm. You know, my music was different. Was a little softer, and this this is. I've been telling my fans and my supporters who are like following me on Instagram and every other platform. I was already hinting that this is a different era, and so I just wanted a name that would reflect it. So don't 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 listen expecting what you. You're used, used to. to. Yeah, okay. It's a change. So be one. Be one. Because this version <laughs> is going to be on fire. <laughs> yeah, you get me. Tell me more about it, you know, the process, all of it. Okay. So the EP has like six songs, and I enjoyed making every single one of these songs. These songs, they touch on different themes, and there are still some very, you know, common themes at the same time. One of the themes that's like common to resilience and like, um, just being what's the word what's the word what's another word for resilience you're just uh, not tenacity? Sh- you're not tenacity <laughs> <laughs> yeah so resilience tenacity there's also the flip side of it like if you are always being resilient always being strong always pushing it fighting another day you need to also relax sometimes find that time to chill out before you get back to the grind you understand so it touches on all of that and there's, there's also you know animosity within everyone human beings the country the the commoners the leaders racism everything is all tied into like animosity and i'm just preaching that let love lead we all know what to do it's not that hard but we think it's hard you know so it's just talking about different things and the grind so yeah three six five is the opener and i just wanted a jump scare i wanted it to be like eh? <laughs> like what <laughs> what is this yeah yeah and there's nine lives which is morally more of a chill vibe you get me and i featured um bk on that and he mm-hmm. killed it you get me so um mayana there's my way there's 10 tools the cycle must break and yeah it's, it's amazing yeah so speaking of which um who are some of your influences or inspiration so i listen to a lot of music growing up like so i can't say it's one person it's okay. a lot of people my god i listened to a lot of music growing up and there was a section my mom was these certain types of genres my dad was these certain types of mm-hmm. genres so it was everything was clashing in my head so yeah um if i had to list it would be burner boy it would be asha asha is an inspiration to me in a very specific way mm-hmm. her boldness to do what she was doing at that time yeah. was interesting and her intentionality um beyonce rihanna sean paul sean paul was my first introduction to dance hall and I didn't know what I didn't know what he was saying, but that was I just it moved the vibe, me. Yeah. yeah, it moved me. It moved me heavily. Since Yamagan is definitely a part of that mean, as I, well, yeah. because damn, she she brought the energy. She did. She was the I, only yeah, one. And I was at like, the time. 
yo, I like this. I like <laughs> this. So, yeah, since Yamogan, it goes on. The list goes on. I see this list. I see a little bit of the Rihanna as well. Mm. The, the fact that you're quite fashionable as well. We're going to get there yeah. um, <laughs> much yeah. later. Okay, so you have six tracks in this EP. You. Uh, you've got a video for how many? Oh, Mayana. We're working Mayana. on a video for 365. 3, nice. Okay, so that's in the works as yeah, well. That's in the works. So who are some of the producers you worked with? Ooh. The producers, they're my family, really. I enjoyed working with them. We have Major Banks on 365. We have um, Honky Beats on Nine Lives. We have Rem Baggins on Mayana. We have Major Banks on My Way and Bigfoot also co-producer. Yeah. Saiku Must Break, Remy Baggins and um, Bigfoot. And then there's Tentos, Remy Baggins. So like it's four producers, all in all, four producers. Okay, so what do you think back? I mean, after you've recorded, when you listen again, is there a particular, you know, track that strikes you differently now, you know, out of all the songs? Maybe you just didn't pay that much attention when you recorded it, but right now you're like, oof, this track. I, I, I don't want to say I didn't pay attention to it because, like, because for every song to make it to the EP, it means it was good enough. And yeah. It was amazing. I loved it. You get me? But Cycle Must Break, when I made it here, yeah, I was like, yo, I just need good music, like really deep, philosophical, good music, mm -hmm. music that will make you think. But like, I made it a while, a while back, so I was like, maybe it won't be everybody that would relate to this song, it won't yeah. be everybody that would like it. But the reception I'm seeing, like people... For that particular song. Yeah, like people really like that song, and it just, it just busts my head, and I'm like, wow, okay. Okay, guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but still, still speaking of the songs on the album, if there was supposed to be a remix, which of the songs would that be? Three six five. Three six five. Um, what would the dream collaboration be for that? Pasalu. Okay. I really like Pasalu, and I think that is right up his alley. I like Burna Boy on it, but like Burna Boy on it would be great. You know what I'm saying? Fire. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, this is you, you know. Uh, for Saku must break, maybe like you know Damian Mali, like somebody, okay. some you know Rastafarian vibes on that. You know, yeah. Do you speak Patwa? Yeah, a little bit. I try. I can't speak past people that have the language. Huh? Yeah, yeah, definitely. But then listening to caution, what message do you want, you know, or feeling do you want people to get when they listen to the EP? Yeah, I want them to feel like they can relate. That's something I always strive for. Strive for is relatability. Like, I want them to feel energized to move to the next day because this country is getting harder by the minute. You get me. There's always new news about this. They're saying this. They're saying that laws are changing. Things are happening. I want you to listen to it and have the energy to keep going. Have the motivation to keep going. Be aware of what's mm -hmm. happening. Be aware that you are also supposed to have a hand in change that you want to see. That's why yeah. I spoke on animosity and letting love lead in all of us in Cycle Must Break. You get me? So have the motivation to move on and keep going, keep grinding in life. Have the motivation to to strive for your dreams and just yeah. be aware of what's going on. And also have some time for yourself. No go, no go, <laughs> no go break down. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? So yeah. I think, I, I also see the passion in just pre before the interview you have spoken about women's rights yeah. you know and just equality among human beings mm -hmm. you know how important is it for you to use your platform for advocacy exceptionally important like this these are the if you check the plans for me like i t I, I intend to tie in you know advocacy for human rights and not just women it's people human beings deserve to be treated with respect yes, I am. you understand just because this one is weaker just because this one is this we are human beings all of us so there should not be any weirdness you understand so i plan to i'm looking for how to properly do this i'm going to obviously sing about it but like there's also i'm going to find other ways to affect change in that way yeah okay real quick um okay because of time also um, oh, you're enjoying this <laughs> you, know, you don't want to go <laughs> Musically, you're currently making waves, um, but then, do you style yourself? Yes, I do. Oh, okay. I style, I sketch designs as well. Oh. When I have time. So yeah. when you shoot videos, you're part of the, the, the styling. Yeah, in my Yana video, I co-style that. 
um a lot of the fits when i, I go to the market like i'm a balloon child like I'm i love there. it <laughs> yeah like, i like i'm a perfectionist i want to pick it out myself i feel like i'm the only one that knows what i what want you, yeah yes yeah, so i go there myself i pick it out i have my tailor and then there's also shout out to peaky oh, that's crochet. less work for your team i love you for bro <laughs> I, I do my videos myself as well yeah my pictures everything i should have a camera this is my Are camera like i'm really hands-on so, so you're full-on creative <laughs> are, are you looking to explore i mean music you're exploring are you looking to explore other Outside creative music, outlets yes 100 percent. i'm a very creative person it's not, it's not just music my first love was even designing clothes i used to design clothes for my mom for my school like mm -hmm. i just was doing it as part. they just say ah my name is anino it's short for him and they're like anino please design something for me i want to go out and i'm just like okay just give them like oh my i'm like oh yeah sure and i didn't know that this is actually not normal yeah you get me so i can do a lot of things i want to get into fashion have my own line like even high fashion get into that world i even have passion for voice acting a little oh, bit okay. yeah i like to switch accents and i i am a very animated person if you hang around me enough there's a lot for me to do and i just i want to dip my hands in all this love it so how do you define your style my style, I think it's edgy, I think it's fierce, I think it's sometimes I like to tip between feminine and masculine because I just, I like comfort, you understand, and I'm not afraid to do what I want, and I really like the color black and silver, <laughs> you get me, so I just, it's edgy, it's, it's, it's dark, you know, it's not gothic, no way you call me gothic, ah. gothic, it's just, I have the elements of a goth look, but like, that's not it. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, alright, so I'm just going to ask... It's a this or that, and you just pick okay. which is which for you. Late night sessions or early morning sessions? Late night. Late night. Uh -uh. Okay. Why are you waking up in the morning? <laughs> to record. <laughs> <laughs> Someone came here and said late night was outdated. Please. Outdated. I will yeah. do once I What's best for you, bro? I don't do that morning thing. Okay. Heels or sneakers? Sneak you said that, you know. You know that. <laughs> just to ask. Sneakers. Freestyle or structured songwriting? <sighs> structured structured songwriting so it's this or that now you know i like both so. live band live live okay <laughs> afro beats or dancehall why you do that to me intentionally <laughs> what is what is even afro beats afro beats is it's a movement it's not me jamming, <laughs> uh, so no, what are you thinking i will have to pick afro beats because i uh, gotta support the culture because uh, you want to be nigerian beyonce or rihanna rihanna sorry Singing or rapping? Singing. Singing. Tattoos or piercings? Piercings. piercings. Drake. Uh, I said Drake. I still have an eyebrow piercing. Oh, really? My mother flipped out. Ah! <laughs> Bro, she was like, eh? But like something that I, so, I respect her for, like I went to church with the eyebrow piercing and she didn't, she, she wasn't like, no, no, sit near me. Because you're still, still a like, daughter, even though in her mind. She was just like, I'm going to pray and you remove this thing. <laughs> and that's what happened. So. That's fine, that's fine. Um, dreads or braids? Dreads. I mean, dreads. I mean, I mean. A wild night, wild night out or a cozy night in? My, I'm a homebody. Yeah, I'm so funny. Okay. <laughs> My next question is funny. One night stand or friends with benefits? God. <laughs> <laughs> friends, friends with benefits. Friends with yeah. benefits. Oh, yeah. The guy with a dark past or the guy with a clean slate? I don't know. Son. Like, I do. If you were to pick one. I don't know. I can't pick who. It depends on who the person is in that moment, to be honest. Okay. Bad boys or good boys? Good boys. Good boys. Beard or clean shaven? Bad boys are outdated. Really? <laughs> they <laughs> like are? That person said this stuff. <laughs> Wine or whiskey? Wine. Wine. Okay. I gotta let you go.